on. What's going on, guys? This is Kyle Carroll from MyMMANews.com and Carroll's Corner MMA Podcast. Tonight, we got Bobby Casal, who be fight, who's fighting uh, relatively soon. Bobby, long time no see. How you doing? How's it going, man? I was here right before my first fight ever. That's Back right. In, yeah, a uh, while ago. Yeah, I was 18 years old. How now old are you now? This is pretty crazy. Old. Holy moly. Time flies, right? Yeah, right? And big things, um, for those who don't know, you were in the cages recently with the UFC champion, Amanda Nunes, um, which I want to get to in a little bit, but that's, that's pretty exciting stuff for you. Dude, that was one of the best experiences of my life. and it was, It's crazy, man. That's awesome. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. You're no longer on Long Island. You're down in Florida. Tell us a little bit what's going on for you. Uh, I now train at uh, Sanford MMA, which has just become Kill Cliff Fight Club. Um, that's where I train myself. I also train at American Top Team Sunrise with Roger Crawl. He's a uh, really he's a great striking coach. And through training and things like that, uh, I started coaching a lot of guys in just jujitsu. Like I got a little crew of guys that I coach for, like more like MMA grappling and strategy mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So between my own fights, I've been training my ass off. And then in between, I train guys, mostly UFC guys, too, which is a great experience. And now a girl, too, the female go to Amanda Nunez. So it's a lot of stuff. And uh, coaching people has only helped my game. So it's like a great experience. Also, I get to travel a lot and see how things really work behind the scenes before I go and do it myself. So. Absolutely. I like being a coach, a football coach and wrestling coach. I always ask everyone, how much does that help you? And like you said, it's, it helps you with a lot. Is it the details that like the little fine points that you, you think you would miss when you're not coaching that now that you're a coach, you're like, yo, you need these details. And now in your own mind, you're like, oh, I have to have this as well. Yeah. Well, it's like I do things a certain way, but for someone else's body type or someone else's style, that might not work for them. So you, mm-hmm. I show a move or I'll show something and someone will come back at me with a question that like I never thought of. So then I got to sit there for a second and be like, well, I don't know. Let me try it out. Let me try and work this out or tell them to try this and then get back to me and things like that. So it makes your mind kind of work in ways that you would never think. So it lets me expand my thought process and mind. And then after that person asks me a question and we resolve it, now I know for next time when I teach that move, I can add that little bit in that came from teaching someone. So as much as me coaching helps them, they, they also help me. Cause then now when I'm fighting too, if whatever question they ask happens to me, now I got a result. So it just helps me expand mm-hmm. my game. And the, Absol- the possibilities are endless. Absolutely. Uh, so what inspired the move from Long Island down to Florida? Man, you know, COVID was tough. And before, right before COVID, me and my girlfriend visited uh, here once and we loved it. We really enjoyed it. And we were thinking about moving and then we decided not to. And then just with COVID, my, I was living with my parents and my family mm-hmm. and they had to move. Like my, uh, my mom lost oh, her wow. job and they were like, oh, we're going to move down to Florida. So then right before that, me and my girlfriend were going to move, but we decided against it. So then we were like, oh, I guess we're moving because I have no place to live. So then my girlfriend and me, we moved down uh, here to Deerfield Beach where uh, Sanford is or Kilcliffe FC is. And then we just made it work. It worked out, I guess. (laughs) That's awesome. It's crazy how much COVID has influenced so many different things and um kind of like forced you guys to move down to florida but yeah now here you are you look like you're sitting in a pretty good situation um yeah, and probably nice. paying half the rent that you would up here yeah dude things are <laughs> way cheaper well, things are starting to get a little expensive now mm-hmm. but uh dude it's crazy like my rent here for what we have would be like triple what i pay it's it's crazy honestly moving down here was there's like a lot of things <laughs> that i didn't even realize like like I had friends just come down and visit from New York and they looked at the gas and they were like, Whoa, it's like way cheaper here. It's like stuff, little things too, but it's a nice life down here. Mm-hmm. Plus it's always warm. I don't have to go outside and you know, when it's cold out in New York and you go outside and it like hurts to be outside <laughs> and get to your car, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. You're slipping on ice and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about how like you, so you're training guys, you're jujitsu grappling. 
Um, how did it come about to become part of the, the corner and the coach of Amanda Nunes? So um, I, one of the guys I coach is Ronnie Lawrence. He's in the UFC and uh, his coach is a guy named Roger Crawl, who's one of the most amazing striking coaches. He's been coaching for like 30 years. He was like the head coach of ATT. He, or like striking coach of ATT. He's amazing. So through Ronnie, I got linked up with him and he started helping me out. And he saw the things I was teaching and the things that I was doing with these guys. And then it just came to be that he started coaching Amanda. Amanda left ATT and then she needed a grappling coach. So Roger went to her and was like, hey, we use this guy named Bobby who he's pretty good. He has a good mind for MMA. He's uh, he's helping out all my guys. Uh, we'll try him out. So I went in one day and like talked with her. I showed a few moves, you know, like I watched the night before I watched the fight that she had with Juliana the first time. I was like, this is what I think about the fight. This is what I think you should do. Uh, we drilled a little, we rolled a little. And then after I was just part of the team, she was extremely welcoming. Her and Nina are just two of the most kind, the some of the best people you can ever meet. And it was just a fantastic experience. And here's a photo with you. All, you're on the right of Amanda right there, and yeah, Amanda's wife, Nina, to, to the left of her, and your other coaches. Who are the other two coaches with you? Uh, that's right? Patrick, the wrestling coach on the left, and that's Roger right there. Awesome. That's pretty sweet, man. That's like big moment in uh, sports history right Dude, there. that and fight was You're crazy. in a part of it. Yeah. Like, think about, like, there's not a lot of times where someone gets three 10-8 rounds in a fight, right? It's very, mm -hmm. very, very rare. And then – I was a part of the camp that did it. And I was there ringside watching it. Like there was a point in the fight where I was I sitting there. House. I, yeah, I was sitting there at ringside and I was <laughs> like, this is fucking crazy. Like what is going on? Like she's knocking her down. She's cutting her. She's doing all this shit. I was like, this is fucking nuts. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. That's that awesome, man. That experience was nuts. Because, you know, it's not just like. You know, the first time you walk out uh, at a UFC event, you're like, whoa, this is a huge arena. There's, like, tons of people here. That's cool. But then when you walk out the main event of a title fight, that's when the <laughs> arena's packed. You got Mike Tyson in the front row. You can see him across the thing. And then, like, the crowd is going crazy. I remember when, when Amanda, like, walked up the stairs to go into the cage. And she turned around and raised her hands. And the crowd went nuts. I almost cried. I was like, this is fucking nuts. <laughs> But then by the time we stood up on the corner, I, I looked around, I saw the crowd, I settled in. I was like, all right, like, we got this. Like, this is all good. Like, all I got to do is focus on the fight, read the fight, and just do what we've been practicing. And she went out there and killed it, man. Like, that fight was – that was impressive. That's some, some goat stuff right there. Yeah, definitely impressive for sure. I know um, Pena was saying that her switching her feet and her stance yeah, she really threw her off. off. That's all Which right. I th blew my mind that she was like, that's why I lost. Like, yeah. like, because she switched her feet. Like, you didn't practice at all. And she said she didn't. But their coach of all the, the things was, I practiced. Her coach in the corner was saying they did some southpaw work for something. I mean. Oh, did it? Okay. Because I saw in the interviews, she's like, I never even practiced this. I'm a rematch. I don't know. That's, that's her problem, man. Yeah. You got to be ready for anything. <laughs> I, I That's what I thought. I'm like, you're a professional. You're at the highest level in the female's. MMA, and here you are um, saying you didn't practice anyone switching their feet or yeah, their stance. I mean, the way I see it, if you took – if you call yourself a champion, you know, you got to have tools and be able to do a lot, mm -hmm. right, be able to do anything. If you took, like, Alex Volkanovsky, right, and he fought anyone, and they're normally righty and they went out there lefty, do you think it would bother that guy or do you think he would get it done? No, I think he would get it done 100%. That's why exactly. that comment just threw me off. And I was like, I'm like, is she a little crazy right now? Like, yeah. who says that? She, she's an interesting person. <laughs> um, <laughs> for real. But you know what? One of the things I liked about um, Amanda Nunes and her wife is that they seem very, very like family oriented. They always have their child around yeah. with them. They're always together. And I think that's a huge part and an aspect that's kind of gets left out a lot of times of yeah, MMA. Yeah. And that's. I think when you're able to bring your family into it, it's, it keeps that balance and uh, helps out, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, if anything, like having her family there with Amanda, like only helps her relax, you know? That's, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's something that I learned too was 
you know, you don't want to burn yourself out focusing on the fight. You know, like they, even during the fight week, they were going out and doing stuff, like enjoying themselves. And then when it came down time to it, she was able to turn it on, you know. I think that's, I think that's something that really helps. And, you know, when you have a, I, get, I don't have a kid, but I'm guessing when you have a kid mm-hmm. that that takes up a lot of your mind. So I guess oh, I'm sure found it does. a way to only make it help. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about your fight coming up, who you're fighting and where you're fighting. I'm fighting uh, Titan FC down here in South Florida. Um, I think it's in Miami. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's in Miami, somewhere around the Miami area. I'm fighting a guy named Corey Delaney. Uh, he has a lot of experience, a lot of fights. He uh, he likes to wrestle. He like throws some power on the feet, you know. And I think I got all the tools to to really take away his best attributes. And I really think. It's a good fight for me, and I think that it will be a big like coming out party for me. I think we'll really, I'll be able to show what I'm capable of, and what I know I can do, and uh, I'm very excited. I'm very pumped. I've been training hard uh, over the past two years for me. Have been tough. I had like a million fights fall through. I think I had about twelve fights fall through in the past mm-hmm. year. It's crazy. Most of them were happening in the fight week, and I would go through opponents like crazy. But this one seems like it's going to stick, let's hope. And I think I'm going to put on the best performance in my career. Uh, you're going to see the improvements in my striking. You're going to see my great ground game. And I'm looking. I'm not looking just to win. I want to show that like I could deal with any problem put in front of me. And I have great solutions. And just in the moment, I could shine. Absolutely. What's your current record right now? I right now I'm 0 and 1 as a pro. My first pro fight was just a doozy, man. Uh, we were going at it, and then uh, I, I shot a takedown and missed. I kind of purposely shot a shitty shot because the guy I was fighting had a lot of guillotine finishes, so I thought he'd okay. go guillotine, and then he didn't. So then I just performed a basic wrestling standup. I just I just stood up because he was in turtle, and then he tried to lock his hands around me. So I break his hands, I have his hands, and I start trying to cut into him, like turn my shoulder into him, just doing a move that I teach and practice like every day. And then Mm -hmm. in the middle of the move, he starts throwing like little slapping punches, and the ref just stopped the fight. And I wasn't hurt, there was nothing going on. Like I performed from the ground, got my feet under me, switched my feet, grabbed his hands, and then my opponent turned around and looked at me and went, what happened? Like you see in the video, he like puts his hands up, I put my hands up like, what the fuck? And then he goes, what happened? And then he turns to the other guy and goes, you won. And then we're like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean? And then you won. the kid just, yeah, the kid just hugged me and was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know what to do. And then I was like, yeah, I, I don't know. And in the back, we me and the guy were talking and he was like, yeah, like I felt exactly what you were doing. And he's like, I don't, I don't know what else That's to crazy. do. And then like I put in to get it overturned and they told me that, like, while they agree with me, they can't overturn it. And then uh, people I know were trying to talk to other people that might be higher up to get it overturned. And then basically everyone just told me that, like, I have to suck it up and deal with it. Like, That's BS. So it is what it's it is. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate when sometimes when, you know, refs don't uh, really able to c- comprehend what they're looking at. Doesn't happen too often, but uh, yeah, man. It does. Dude, I wrote like the athletes. I wrote like a three-page essay breaking down like the move I was doing, and <laughs> they they still were like, "This is great, but there's nothing we can do." I'm like, That's crazy. Right. And you know, it's crazy because I've seen far less get overturned. Yeah, for sure. And also, like, if you watch my fight, you can go watch it on Fight Pass. Even the commentators are like, "What? That was sketchy." Like Joe Lozon on the broadcast calls it sketchy. He was commentating. He's like, that was sketchy. That, that was weird. And then now, like, my friends tease me, though, because, like, we're watching the fights last week and stuff. Someone would be, like, getting knocked down, like, four times, getting the piss beat out of them, and they just let the fight go on. And they're like, oh, remember when your fight was stopped because you were standing and defending yourself and grappling? I was like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though, because we're I was watching it with my friends, and we're like, man, are they going to stop this fight? And it took forever for them to finally – a hop- yeah. well, I don't know. Well, actually, the one fight they didn't even stop. They ended up going yeah. the full, full that length. Fight. That guy, what the yeah. hell is going on there? That was insane. That fight, and 
Yeah, I don't know how that didn't get stopped like three or four times, but <laughs> no, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, so what do you what do you learn from something like that where you're in a situation like that? What do you learn from that? Uh, I think I definitely like overthought the situation because the guy was cornering me against the cage. So I was like thinking I can like outthink everyone else. When in reality, there's like, I didn't stick to like my basics. Like I didn't stick to like, like the things I knew worked. I was like, oh, let me try this like exquisite move. Cause like I'm smarter than everyone. But in reality, mm-hmm. it's like in the moment you got to stick like, I'm always such a proponent of it, too. I'm just sticking to what works. Like, stick to, like, what the highest probability things are, what, like, the highest percentage moves are, and just, like, drill those into the ground, you know? So that's something big I learned there. Just, like, staying true to what I believe in and not don't try and do, like, the craziest thing and think you can, like, outsmart everything that's going on, you know? Absolutely. I, when you're saying that, I'm thinking of, in my head the Varsity Blues. You ever see the movie where no, the coach is like, "Stick to the basics, stick to the basics," and hitting him in the head with the uh, whistle? I'll have yeah. to send you a clip of it. But um, no, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, you stick to the basics. Sometimes uh, you feel like you're capable of doing something that people don't expect, and then uh, it just throws you off a little bit when you yeah. uh, try something. Um, now um, you got so this fight so. What about this fight um, makes you f- feel so confident going in? Um, I'm a big proponent of, like, tape study and, like, awesome. like, seeing, like, tendencies, what guys like to do and things like that. And I just really think that, like, the tools that I know I have that I practice every single day um, are really going to give this guy a problem. I don't think he's ever done anything in a fight that – I've not seen before and that I can't deal with. And that really boosts my confidence. I think that a lot of my strengths um, are where his weaknesses are. You know, Um, I think that my just my overall game is just better. I think I'm just better. And I don't want to say too much, you know, about what I I, want to do and where I want to go. But I just know that I'm better. And I know that I'm going to put on just the performance of a lifetime and, I'm hoping this opens up even more doors for me and that I can really start. I really just want to get my career and where I want to go, where I want to be on track. I keep having all these fights fall through and it's extremely frustrating, but I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing and that's what I'm sticking to. Awesome. What are, what are your goals? Your short term, obviously get in there and win this fight. Um, but long term, what do you, what do you see yourself? Um, like do you have a five fight projection for yourself? Honestly, I would – this year, I wanted to get five fights in. And I just keep losing the fights. The, they fall out, like, the week of. Like, I was supposed to fight in June. And, like, during the fight week, I went through, like, four people signing the contract and then pulling out, then pulling out. But for me – Is there a reason I, why they pull out or they dude, say? Some, some dude last time said he had an allergic reaction to his cat. Wait, what? Dude, I don't know. The Yo, promoter, get rid of the cat, there, dude. Dude, the guy shows me the messages. He goes, oh, no, like, my cat had an allergic reaction to my cat. I can't make it. I'm like, dude, what are we doing here? Like, what? You might as well say your dog ate your homework. Jesus. Yeah, well, what is going on? <laughs> but, man, my projection for myself is obviously I want to be in the UFC. I want to be a champion. I know I can be a champion. The guys that I've trained with now, being at Sanford, I know I can get to that level. Because I felt it. I see what they do. And, mm-hmm. honestly, just I know I can get there. Cause I, I just, I feel it and I've now experienced what that level is. I see what people do to get to that level. And I know I can honestly by like the end of next year, beginning of the year after I'd like to be like knocking on that door. I'd like to fight two more times this year, this fight. And then another one and then hopefully get like four or five next year and then have like seven, eight fights and be right there. Be like ready for a contender mm-hmm. series fight, be ready to, get a long-term contract somewhere and a bigger promotion and just really prove myself. I know where I'm going, like I said, and, and it's exciting. And that's, what's frustrating about having fights fall through and referee stoppages. Once I get a fight, mm-hmm. it's crazy things like that. But yeah, I'd love to be at the end of next year, beginning of the year after right at that UFC spot. Awesome. And no doubt. I don't think you, you definitely could uh, do all this. That's so why I'm looking forward to seeing you get in there 
How can people watch you uh, fight this fight coming up? Uh, my fight will be August 26th on UFC Fight Pass, Titan FC, I believe 79. Or if you want to come check it out, it's somewhere in the Miami area. Uh, you can find it on Instagram. Awesome. Um, how can people find you on Instagram? My Instagram is my name, at Bobby Casal. Um, my last name is spelled C-A-S-A-L-E. It's pronounced Casal. Everyone pronounces it differently. But <laughs> that's where you can find me. <laughs> awesome. Um, before I let you go, uh, what's one thing about you that nobody knows and you want to share with everyone? That nobody knows. Man, a lot of the things, I'm a big fan of like dry humor, like saying something mm -hmm. serious and then it's a joke, but no one gets that. So a lot of the things I say, I don't mean. <laughs> That's what people should know going forward. Awesome. Love it. A good, good dry sense of humor. You got to love that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, anything you want to say? Anything you want to say to your opponent? A prediction for your fight? Uh, I'm going to say my fight is not going to get out of the first round. And I hope my opponent actually like looks good and brings his best to the fight. Awesome. Bobby, I appreciate you hopping on and chatting with us. It's been a pleasure to talk to you again. It's been so long. Um, Thank you, man. Best of luck, dude. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. This is Carol's Corner MMA Podcast, and we're signing off. Any <laughs>